Hi all. As you know, when we build an Angular application, JavaScript bundles are generated as the output of that process. So today, let's take a look at two tools which will help us to analyze the JavaScript bundles which are generated as part of the Angular build. So one tool is the Webpack Bundle Analyzer and the other is the Source Map Explorer. So today I have created a simple Angular application which basically takes two numbers and displays its sum in the HTML. So this is our application. When I enter two numbers, it will show the sum. So for this particular application, what I have done is I am making use of the library Lodash, which is a third party library. And I am calling the sum function within this Lodash. Ideally, the bundle size of this application should be very small as we have very little code. So first, let's take a look at the Webpack Bundle Analyzer, which will help us to see the bundle size of our application. For analyzing our Angular application, I have stopped serving the application. And now we need to build our application. And ideally, it should be in the production mode. So in order to run our application, we need to use the command ng build and we need to provide this flag that is stats json which will generate a stats json output file which will be analyzed by our webpack bundle analyzer tool. So our application has been built and when we go to the dist folder of our application, you can see that there is a file called stats.json which has been generated. So this basically consists of statistics which will be passed as the input to our Webpack bundle analyzer. So now let's run the bundle analyzer. So this is the command. This is an NPM package. So in case it is already installed globally, you need not give the NPX. So in case you are using it for the first time, you can give NPX Webpack bundle analyzer and the path of the stats.json. So here it will be present within this optimize app and stat.json. So once we run that command, immediately a window will be opened, which will show the bundles present within our application and it will be represented in a visual format. So if you move to the left side, we have a overlay which shows the bundle size. So you can pin it here. Within this, there are three tabs. One is the stat which represents the actual size of the bundles before any process like minification was applied to it. So this will not be the actual size which is created as part of the ng build. So parsed will be the actual size of the bundle. So if you go to the list folder, you can see that the main bundle is 190 KB which is identical to the parsed value. But in case of stat, it will be much higher as it represents the statistics for the unminified code. Similarly, we have the gzip tab in which the gzip size will be shown. That is the size after compression using gzip. So here you can filter out for any particular bundle. Here also we can select any particular bundle which we need to analyze. So in our case, we have the main polyfill and runtime. Our application code will mainly be in the main.js. So we can click on that and you can see the different components which are present within our bundle along with the size. So once you hover on top of that, it will be showing the size. So here it represents our source code and along with the node modules angular path, which we have used. There's a core, the forms and the common. And here we have our Lodash. So here you can see that actually it makes use of around 70 KB of size within our bundle. But actually we have used only a very small function that is a sum function within our application. So why this happened is here in our application, I am making use of the Lodash, which is a common JS module. The problem of using common JS modules is that it takes up a lot of size because the tree shaking which is performed by the webpack and other bundlers, it won't take part 
in case of a common JS module. So in this case, we can make use of a fix like there is an ES version of Lodash, which is called Lodash ES. So we can install that and make use of that within our application. So I am going to install that package. So the package is installed and now we can make use of the Lodash ES. So you also need to install the typings for the same. So once the typings is installed, now the error goes away. And now let's build the same application one more time using the stats.json option. So the stats.json option can be used in two ways. Either it can be passed as a parameter to the ng build process that is hyphen hyphen stats.json or in the angular json file within the build target you can provide the stats json option so you can set it as true this also has the same effect as passing the parameter so now our bundles have been created let's run the webpack bundle analyzer so now if you go to the main.js you can see that the lodash is not at all being shown here because the size of the Lodash has been reduced considerably since we are making use of the ES modules. So we can search for Lodash and you can see that it is very much less. Only around 199 bytes are being used within our application. So using this bundle analyzer, we were able to find out which third-party libraries constituted most of our bundle size. You can see that the total bundle size has reduced to 154 KB from 224 KB. Here we have an option called show content of concatenated modules. So we need to enable this. Otherwise, we will not be able to see the components within our main.js. So even though this does not Given accurate size, it will provide an overall idea about which packages constitute most of our bundle size. So now let's take a look at another tool which helps us to analyze the bundles that is the source map explorer. So this tool basically makes use of source maps which can be created for both JavaScript as well as styles. So one advantage of using the source map explorer is that we will be able to analyze both JavaScript as well as CSS files. For using this particular tool, first we need to enable source map in our application. So usually in the production mode of our application, the source map will be disabled. So this is the development mode. Similarly, in the production mode as well, we need to enable the source map. So for that, we can provide that within our production mode. So once we have done that, we can build our application. So once our application is built, once we go to the dist folder, you can see that the map files have been created for all the JavaScript as well as the CSS files. So now we can analyze these source map files by making use of the source map explorer. So I am going to use the npx itself. This is an npm package. So npx source map explorer, you can give the path of our application. So first I am going to analyze all the JavaScript files. So it's asking to install Source Map Explorer. Now we will get a visual representation quite similar to the Webpack Bundle Analyzer. And here you can see the different bundles that is the main.js, the polyfill, and 
the runtime as well. So we'll be able to select each file from here. And here you will be able to see similar results to what we previously encountered. So Angular itself recommends that we make use of the source map explorer because it provides a more accurate representation than compared to the Webpack bundle analyzer. And another advantage is that we will be able to analyze CSS files as well. So since we don't have any CSS within our application, the CSS file is generated as empty. And as a result, the source map does not make much sense. But in case I had CSS within our my application, it would have shown in a similar representation to the JS files. So another important tool which helps us to identify whether a particular third party NPM brings a lot of size to our application. There is a site called bundle phobia. So here we will be able to search for the size of any NPM package and you can see how much bundle size it will increase. So here first I am going to check the load hash. So it shows that it adds around 70 KB and it shows that it is not reshakable. So at the same time, we make use of load hash ES. It shows that the total size is 98 KB, but it is reshakable and has no side effects. And it even shows like when we import a particular function from Lodash, what will be the size of the bundle which will be created. So in our case, since I made use of sum, you can see that it's only 264 bytes. And some libraries which come to mind which will greatly increase our bundle size, one is the moment. So moment.js is most commonly used for date and time manipulation. So the size is around 294, 290 KB. And even it provides some suggestions of libraries which are quite similar in functionality. So date function is one such library which comes at a much lesser bundle size. Another library which greatly increases the bundle size is the math math.js so you can see that it increases the size by about 686 kb unless you are making very high precision arithmetic within your application you should think twice before adding such libraries to your application since it can greatly increment the bundle size of your application so hope you are able to get a good idea about how you can analyze the javascript bundles generated for your application See you soon. Thank you.